in jiu-jitsu, we are on a generation that we won things yesterday. Professor, how long do you think you would get me to get a black belt? I want a belt in two yeah, weeks. I said that I like to give the answer that nobody likes. Depends. Can take long for you to learn. Right? Can take learn for you to start chaining techniques, like putting together things. Oh, that's why this, this is why that. And then I think that's the part where people fall in love with Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. But people also quit Jiu-Jitsu. All right. Bruno Bastos we have in today. Um, I did a little bit of research on you. I want to, I want to tell you and I want to mm -hmm. tell everyone else that, like, I am, just for the record, I am not a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. I've never spent mm -hmm. one second on the mat. Um, I did wrestle as a child. That was probably the extent. Mm -hmm. I feel like I stopped wrestling probably when you started jiu-jitsu. Okay, <laughs> so it's been that long. Um, but you are a five-time black or five fifth degree black belt. Mm -hmm. um, and you have your school here is Bastos Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Fitness exactly. here in Midland, Texas. Um, so pleasure to meet you. Um, I appreciate you coming in today. If you can just give me a little bit of your background. I'm sure the people out there know who you are. Mm -hmm. They've seen your long list of accomplishments, but just mm -hmm. a, a sort of a little background on, on yourself. Yeah, so um, I started Jiu-Jitsu back in 1990 uh, in Rio de Janeiro. I was 10 years old, so I'm be going to be completing 34 years of Jiu-Jitsu now this year, uh, this coming May. And then I start teach 1998, so I'm going to be completing 26 years of teaching now oh, wow. um, this year. And like I think the the first shift for me was like seeing guys like Royce, Hickson, like winning UFC, Japan Open, Vale Tudo. And then like, oh, there is like really like... Uh, professional life in jiu-jitsu but back then being more like oh i have to become a value to the fighter right mm -hmm. i wasn't even mma and then by the time i was like a black belt at 20 years old um and then i was seeing like people some some guys coming to the united states so i could see um that as a possibility right and then 2009 they moved to the united states uh to dallas first and then spending two years in dallas then moving to Midland, February of 2012. So completing now 12 years uh, in Midland. Going to be this coming week. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Yes. So so pretty much that's what like, I've been doing um, my whole life since I'm 10 years old, right? Um, I want to be a judoka. Didn't have judo schools around. Um, so my mom put me in jiu-jitsu because I had two cousins that they, nowadays they are black belts as well. And then... They were doing jiu-jitsu already, so that's how I got into jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm not the normal story that, oh, I started jiu-jitsu and fell in love. No, like, I fell in love with having friends mm. because I was a kid that was bullied in school. And then, but back then, was, there was no no bullying, right? Right. So, right. but if it was, like, today's, like, today's days, I would be, like, picking on school, bullying, all that stuff. And then, so I didn't have friends in school. So now, out of a sudden, I have friends, and then I have people that ask me, oh, how how you doing? How was your day? And things like that. So I, I was always looking forward to be with my friends, hang out with my friends. So it just wasn't, wasn't even like a day thing. And so until I was like 14, then go back to Hickson, Royce, and then like all their victories, and then uh, in Vale Tudo, and that's what got me like, I think I, I fell in love, with, I realized that I fell in love with Jiu-Jitsu when I was a teenager. Uh, so my first three, four years was more like, oh, I have friends, um, competing, everything, but not like the, I like to say this, not the normal story of people that fall in love with just right away, right? Um, but and then by the time I was a young adult, and then I started teaching, I was 17 to 18, yeah. when I started teach, and uh, I, that's why I say that, like, I have done pretty much all my, all my life, like, on the mats, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I had schools in, in Brazil. And then I was doing physical education in the college. I did sport business as well. So I always look on the outside part of the mats. So not just like on the mats, competing and all this stuff, or being an athlete. I always like the the idea of having a business in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So when I saw the opportunity to come to the United States, and then when I saw the opportunity to open my school, and then so that's what come all the way now to be like in middle now for 12 years. Uh, now having my own school uh, alongside my wife um, and making sure that we do the best we can to impact people's lives for the better. 
it's interesting that you say you you came to Dallas. Dallas is obviously you know a much larger city mm-hmm. than, than Midland. It's a you know it's major metropolitan, um, and and being somebody who's not from Midland, uh, I'm originally from Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, what what about Midland attracted you to come here and start your school, start a school here? Uh, so I, I I always like to say that I didn't choose Midland. Midland chose me, right? Um, I was um, in Dallas. And then some guys from Midland, they would go train uh, with me there. So I had clay hands. He uh, now he lives in other other city, but he would go he would go there train with me, and they end up moving there to train with me. And then he was an MMA fighter as well. Uh, Jared Jones that has the eat to fight, and then I, I do my conditioning for him until those days. He had basic CrossFit before, but it's a guy that would go there training for me as well. And then I had Brad Barnes that has Midland BJJ. He would go there as well, mm-hmm. train with me. And then after two years there, uh, because he in Midland, uh, there was jiu-jitsu, but in MMA schools. Okay. So it wasn't like a, a jiu-jitsu program itself. Right. Right, like a jiu-jitsu school. So and there was the possibility of having a jiu-jitsu program here, like a pure jiu-jitsu program, um, that I was invited to come here to try to build that. And then after one year here, and then things working out, and then I decided to stay because what I saw was the opportunity to, to have something that was mine, right? In Dallas, I was working uh, in a nice uh, MMA facility. Um, but again, MMA facility wasn't like a jiu-jitsu academy, right? And I'm an MMA fan. You're going to see me watching UFC, Bellator, PFL, like everything. Yeah. Um, but my love is jiu-jitsu, and I wanted to have a jiu-jitsu school. I think it's a different environment. It's different everything. Uh, a lot of the things that we see on the MMA, I don't like my own children around, for example. So for me to have uh, an MMA school versus have a jiu-jitsu school, I wanted to have a jiu-jitsu school. And that was really what like I saw as a possibility of coming to Midland to have my own thing. Of course, once I came here and then I saw how is small, because now people have to understand that Midland is big if compared to 12 years ago. Sure, sure. Right, but when I came twelve years ago, I was like, "Dang, that that's a small town, right?" And uh, but it was like one thing that I like to say is that I have always bet on myself, and I have always bet on jujitsu. And that move to Milan was like betting in both. Like I was betting on myself that I could do a work that would make work in Midland, even though it was a much smaller town. You're right. And then betting the power of jujitsu that now through jujitsu I can make this work as well. Um, and I think, I think it worked. That's great. <clears throat> That's great to hear. Like I said, I moved here three years ago and again, I'm from Las Vegas, right? So yes, very familiar, obviously growing up, you know, and, and, and entering, I guess in my twenties, I guess, you know, in the city of, of UFC essentially, mm-hmm. right. Very exposed to that. Um, you've, you've been, I mean, you've been training for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so like, I guess my question is is like, have you seen waves of, are there new generations of, of white belts coming in and sort of like in your, in your experience, like what has sort of spawned that on? Has there been waves or has this been pretty consistent over the last? Mm -hmm. No, I understood the question. I think that today's digital market is so much bigger than Anything that I have ever imagined, if I go back to when I was uh, like a teenager and chose to make a living off of jiu-jitsu. Okay. Back then, I was like, okay, I can have a jiu-jitsu academy. And once I become a black belt, I have to make sure that I defend jiu-jitsu on a Vale Tudo so I can build my name. Um, I was on a, on a cruise a couple months ago teaching jiu-jitsu for a whole week. And then like I was talking to two of my friends that they were there teaching as well. But when we, because we know each other since the 90s, and they were like, we like, on the 90s, we would never imagine mm. that we'd have a company partner, partnering up with a cruise company. Yeah, I was just about to say. And then flying us to go to Florida and then leave from Florida and go to the whole Caribbean for a whole week and then like nice excursions and all that and teaching just on the beach and on the ship. And then getting paid for that, like you didn't foresee that, huh? No, like, <laughs> like if so, if I say that, like, fifteen to sixteen years old Bruno that chose to make a living of jiu-jitsu, no, I want to jiu-jitsu for life. If I say that the fifteen, sixteen year old Bruno foreseen that, 
I would be lying. Uh, wh wh didn't have that. Yeah. Right. So of course nowadays when you see um, guys like Joe Rogan with a big influence, like not big, like huge influence, when they talk about Jiu Jitsu all the time and works for UFC, which is a huge brand. Mm -hmm. So they because like a lot of people they don't watch me. Maybe they watch UFC. Right? right? Right. So, like, and the, I feel like that has big influence on how people get attracted to jiu-jitsu as well. Right? UFC, even though have their grappling event now, the UFC Invitational, uh, that, like, bringing more eyes to people because they're using their platform. So now we have millions of people around the world seeing that, like, oh, so that's how it look like when they're not striking. Mm hmm Oh, oh, I actually can try that. I don't have to get punched. I don't have to get kicked. I don't have to get knee. Right. Like elbow. Like, so I think, yes, like it's different nowadays. I think it's a new wave of people that like, oh, I can actually do that. Hang out with my friends on the weekend and tell them about what I did. Okay. Yeah. So, so for, from what I understand, from what I'm getting is like, Clearly, there's a huge distinction between jujitsu and MMA, mm -hmm. but many people just it's just one and the same to them, partially because they grew up watching UFC, perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the marketing of UFC, right? And the pay per views every single mm -hmm. weekend. And there's some that are going, that's what jujitsu is, but it's only that's a, it's a very small portion of it, right? And that's a very happening. dominant portion of it, mm -hmm. honestly. So, so in terms of like, you know, because from what I've seen from your school, it's obviously like, you know, you have children's classes, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have adults and so on and so forth. It's like, the dis what's the motivation p primarily for the children? Like you said, like, you didn't want to be bullied anymore. You wanted mm -hmm. basically self-defense, be able to have confidence in self-defense. Mm -hmm. And then it just turned out you made friends, right? Is it still similar to that with the children these days that are coming in? Yes, because unfortunately, that's a real thing on the schools, right? Where... Uh... Like, we, we have kids going home school just because of bullying in schools. Oh, okay, wow. Right, like, um, we have that as well. So I feel like big part of our program um, comes from, from that situation uh, specifically. And then, of course, uh, when they start, the parents start to see the benefits, right, because it's not only the confidence that the kid get by being able to defend himself or herself, it's how athletic they improve as well. Right, that I think is very important um, that I have like academic, like, uh, academic education on like how to train, like because I did physical education, like I said in Brazil. Uh, my wife, she has a degree from the sports schools in Bulgaria, so it's, my wife's from Bulgaria. Okay, I'm from Brazil, and then I think when we mix that together, she's a judo black belt. And just black belt, now I'm just black belt and judo black belt as well. So when we mix that together, we, we can create a huge um, facilitator to improve the, the child motor skills because we have kids from three years old, mm. started at three years old, and how because of this, every sport season that they go, soccer, basketball, baseball, football, t ball, like whatever, like they, they do in softball, right? they improve their skills on those sports because of the jiu-jitsu training. Interesting. Yes. So the parents see that because of the way we structure, like, the warm-up, and then we make them doing, like, gym, gymnastics movements, how we have them doing, like, animal movements, how we train them, we prepare them to learn and then how to fall, how to take someone down, how to move, how we move your body, how you can properly stand up and... Uh, uh, in a self-defense situation, but like all this, when you take into other sports, having to have the coordination of controlling the, another human being, right? Because jiu-jitsu essentially is you having the power of choosing not to hurt the other person. Mm. Because I don't have to punch you or kick you. Uh, I can protect myself against you and control you. And then like on a, on a case of the kids, like ask for help or even just to run away or... Uh, like, hey, please stop. I don't want to keep doing this. Like, so I think that's, like, the come englobe the whole confidence thing, uh, but also the mental thing of, like, being able to control someone and choose not hurt them, uh, empowering you to be able to protect your loved ones as well, right? We have, like, all these stories of kids that the parents come like, oh, my kid stand up for his friend. Oh, my, my daughter stand up for her friend and things like that. And, and then for the athletic skills that I said that, like, inside the training, the way we build our program, 
and or or teaching system uh they improve the athletic abilities for other sports as well that they, they may like to do that's a it's very interesting i like i totally understand the aspect of like the self-defense aspect but i like what you're saying it's almost it's also like a self-control aspect mm -hmm. right because you you yeah you exactly. are in control um and it teaches that and i mean obviously um you know you can't really um get that from 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 a lot of different sports right but i like the aspect of you've got all of these different movements and it's going to help mm -hmm. you in, in in different ways um for this for somebody like me right brand new fresh off the street type of thing like what should uh what 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 do you sort of recommend the 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 fresh new white belts like what do we what should i expect coming in day one or the first week of sort of like coming to your school so uh, one thing that we make sure that we do is that we divide by levels, right? Because um, nowadays you're going to see some associations uh, and academies, they, they really do have a system of teaching, like a methodology, uh, where you don't going to go for your first day and then be on the same class as a... Uh, a black belt that trained for a world championship, for example. Sure, yes. So not a good experience for you. Right. Not a good experience for the black belt. So neither of you are happy. And then, like, the instructor on the spot, like, oh, who, who do I push? Who do I give more attention? Like, all things like that. So if you're coming in today, then we have our fundamentals program. So on the our fundamentals program, like, you're going to go through the whole phase of, like, all the essentials that you have to learn to be able to then, like, once you know all this and then, like, you pass on a test because, like, we don't do the test uh, for, because, like, again, nothing against other martial arts, but, uh, like, I see people that they charge for belt testing and all that, and that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. But we do, we, we do test your knowledge. Okay, so now I know that you're prepared to go to intermediate class. So that's for your safety, that's not to to like to get you a new belt, right? Okay. So now, so then, like, so by the time you get to intermediate class, you've been training for a few months. So now you have an idea of what jiu jitsu is, right? So then go to intermediate class, and then the same thing, the same process, because and then when you get to the point that you do a test and pass to the best class, now you have an understanding of jiu jitsu. Right, you're already doing rounds. You're like, you know what to tap someone. You know what what to get tapped by someone. You know what to be put someone on the hard spot. You know what to feel like when someone puts you on a hard spot, and you have to work your way out of this, right? And then all inside of, again, all the all methodology that we have, the system that we have, uh, and then so you by the time you get to advanced class, you have like at least almost a year of training. So on that, on that, on that, and then maybe you're still going to be a white belt, but now a white belt that if you need jiu-jitsu, like you could use jiu-jitsu to defend yourself. Okay. And that's why you can be on the same class as someone who is blue, purple, brown, black belt, the belts of jiu-jitsu, right? Um, on an environment that we're not trying to like beat each other up, but like we really try to build each other up. Right. Right, so like, oh, like you know, or here, like you struggle in that position because of this, or oh, that technique not working because you have to adjust your hip more over here, or your upper body, or your head position, and things like that, right? And because I'm not, I'm not, in, and we do that from the kids and the adults. It's the same process for the kids, that is for the adults. The only difference is because I said that we started at three years old, so three to six years old, we call the baby sharks, right? And then for them. They do learn jiu-jitsu, but in a more in a more like uh, playful way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's much more about developing their coordination, their motor skills, which are gonna help them for whatever they like to do, right? And then to help them fall in love with the idea of doing jiu-jitsu every day as well, right? Um, by the time they get six, and then they six to seven, so the transition for the regular, like fundamentals, intermediate. So the baby sharks, regardless of for how long they've been trained, they're always going to be on the on the same group, right? Um, we do have a women's only class as well, but like the the ladies, they they have their special class for them, but they join the 
uh, the regular classes as well. And it's nice because on the women's class, I always like to say there's a parallel universe on the school, right? Where most of the students, uh, they're moms of the kids. And I feel like that's that's the like 40 minutes to one hour where they have their mind free mm. of all the stress or all like the things that they going through through the day, through the week, work, kids, relationship, all that stuff. Yeah. And now they're a group of supportive women like supporting each other, helping each other, all right? And then uh, next thing you know, you're going to see some of those ladies on your intermediate class and then passing to advanced class. And some of them go even like trying to go to, to competition, right? And then like when I say competition, I think most people, they're going to think about, oh, like now it's athlete. No, you don't have to be athlete to compete. Because jiu-jitsu is one of the few sports that um, we have students on their 60s, on their 70s, and they train, like, pretty much every day. We have students on their 60s that go into competition, like, every year. Wow. You know, so you don't you don't want to see a guy playing football on his 60s or on his 70s. No, yeah. Right? Or basketball or whatever, but... You can actually, in jiu-jitsu, man, like, I never imagined myself doing that. But then have a tournament for my age group, my belt level, my weight class. Yeah. Oh, let me see how to do it. Then, like, so well, how that encouragement comes. Uh, I like to tell them that one of the main things that the, the adults, then we go for the adults, like the self-defense aspect as well, right? So what's the best scenario that you can test if you can actually defend yourself then in a competition that you're going against someone that train as well so it's a control environment because I have rules have time sure. have scoring system and all that and it's not an actual fight on the street on about whatever it's like a match where if something goes wrong you just step right right <clears throat> right so like that's the part that i encourage um they should as well kids and adults that i always say that not everyone is going to enjoy competition, but I think everyone should try competition at least once. Okay. To understand the feeling of being on a stress situation. Yeah, it seems like it's a, um, you know, high stress, anxiety, like, in order mm -hmm. to just, like, get the butterflies, right? Like, I'm sure you can come to train all the time and there's going to be, you know, new things, but I feel like, yeah, it's the competition that's going to really it's all the it's all the it's all the outside factors right that's kind mm -hmm. of whether you can keep that out of your head and stay focused yes because we can we can train very hard right but i'm training with my friend right, now right. i'm on the uh, on a on a high school gymnasium or like on a college like little arena whatever and then now I have those guys or girls that i don't know then Oh, what are they going to do to me? Oh, what should I do so I can, like, be on a good situation? Oh, man, I don't want to lose because I don't want to let my coach down. Oh, like, my sure. team is down. Like, because it's all human natural reactions, all human natural feelings. Um, and I think those are really important for the personal development of, what, of the kid and the adult. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of those issues, they, like, uh, when they try, they feel like different feelings that they don't know how to deal with. So that's part of the personal development. So I always say that jiu is a huge tool as well to personal development. Uh, but I firmly believe that competition enhance that too, right? Because you're exposed to feelings that you'd never know that you had. Right. Good, good and bad. Sure. And then like, so it's the bad, like how now how to deal with that, right? So you don't have to be a competitor, um, and you don't have to be a definitely don't have to be like athlete or professional athlete or anything. You can be a hobbyist. I have like students that they oh, once a year like professor I would like to compete. Gonna have that tournament here in Midland or that's whatever. Like, oh yeah, or, like why not, right? And then like there's no like uh, commitment of being a professional athlete. It, that's like a very like small percentage like, in the whole jiu jitsu. Yeah, it has to be right. Yeah, yes. I mean <clears throat> my. my my thought process would be, or is that, I mean, what's the percentage of the people that come in and are like, they purely are looking at this from like a hobbyist perspective versus mm -hmm. the ones that are like, I want to, I want to be an athlete. I want to go pro, whatever that means. But that's so, like, they, they want to go pro. So, like, I, I don't know if, if, if even like 
one percent. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, that would that 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 would make sense, right? It's like not everybody is going to be. Yeah, you know. because it's different. It's different. For us, I'm gonna give for instance, um, we have like a competition team at my academy, right? And then we're gonna have like uh, Mr. Joe Joseph Castillo. He's six six years old, right? He started training with me when he was about turning fifty five. Okay, I saw him on your Instagram. Yes, right. And this is. This is my kind of thing. Like, I can understand children going into martial arts. They've been doing martial arts, you know what I mean, like um, for hundreds, if not thousands of years, mm-hmm. right? And then even the teenagers, right? I think it's, a, it's, it's I think there is this, a sort of Joe Rogan effect to to an extent, and mm-hmm. the podcast, and you see all the podcasters. I mean, everybody is doing Brazilian jiu jitsu. You, it's you, know, it's like celebrities. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Every single podcaster. Um, and, and, and it looks exciting. And I think there's a, I think there is a, probably a subsection of people who are like, yes, there's strength. And, but the, I think it's probably more mental and it's like strategy. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's figuring out, right. How to, you know, how to, how to, how to mm-hmm. essentially tap somebody, beat somebody, whatever it may be. Yeah, but Jiu Jitsu, I always, I always like to compare it to a puzzle. Right. Okay. Uh, and then you can have a 500 piece puzzle, but you can have five thousand piece puzzle you mm-hmm. can have ten thousand piece puzzle and you just is a, the unlimited puzzle because there's no end you, I, yeah I, my, my my thought is essentially you can never stop learning new things is mm-hmm. right like there's no end right no you, there really there is no end in jiu-jitsu. there's always new techniques and new ways like to do things because in fairness it's true like a young art right so um well, like I was talking about Joe, like he came, he was doing CrossFit, and then he was started doing CrossFit. Uh, like he was getting, a, he got in a routine, and then like, oh, he wanted to do something, tried something different. He had a friend that was training just with me, Patrick, and then the, nowadays doesn't train anymore. Mm-hmm. And then Patrick was on his studies, Joe was on his fifties, and then Joe came, and then like he trained until today, right? And then like. Winning, winning multiple world championships on his age group, like in all belt levels that he went from blue, purple, brown, black, um, being one of the most active competitors. And then, but why I'm talking about him? Because if you ask me, like, oh, he's athlete. No, for me, he's like well, you can call him athlete, but amateur athlete. Right. right? He's so, he's he's athletic. Yes. For sure. Like you said, he did CrossFit. It's like he is. I, I mean, the person who's in there. 40s and 50s and so on and so forth right do you find more often than not that if they're starting in jujitsu that they had some sort of athletic past or they're they, just they, or their guys are just like i don't know i just want to try something new oh, i've never like, done this so before that that question is very nice because what i see is that students that they had had a pass in any like serious like competition uh let's say College, like, oh, as a D1 athlete, or, like, I play for Navy, or I play for Air Force, okay. or, like, oh, no, I was, like, high school wrestler, or, like, do, those issues are normally the ones that tend to, like, oh, there's a competition in Jiu-Jitsu, I want to try. So they want to at least try. Right. Versus the issues that have never been, like, athlete in any phase of their life. Yeah. It's harder to for that student, like, to try. Like, when, they should, when that student want to, for the most part, is for their development, like, kind of like, for lack of a better word, facing a fear. Okay. Like facing the unknown. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I could, I could see that that would be a deterrent for a lot of people, right? Because, mm-hmm. and again, I've, I've never done it, right? But, I could see that aspect of like, I don't want to get hurt, right? 100%. I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get thrown around and get, mm-hmm. or I don't want to be gassed out in 30 seconds, right? Because I would imagine it's very hard on the cardio. Um, You can have the cardio of, like, um, world-class athlete, but and, and then it's going to come to the mental because you yeah. can, your adrenaline can consume you and then in 30 seconds, like, you... <laughs> Like right, um, so I think I think, but that that for me is the part of the um, uh, of the personal development, like dealing uh, with stress situations, 
uh, and how that can impact on your day-to-day activities. Like either you like a doctor, or attorney, like a firefighter, police officer, like wh- whatever the situation may be, right? And then we're gonna have um, people like um, Emily Ferreira, one of my students that she started with me when she was 10 to 11 years old. Now she's 22, black belt, professional athlete. Right, has won world championships like in a in a color belt. She has competed like in Brazil, Abu Dhabi. She has like flying like around the world. Like people pay her to teach like seminars, workshops, and things like that. That's like, who you're with in Abu Dhabi. A few yes, last months. exactly. Yeah, and then she and she won like a super fight over there. Uh, she fought uh, against a girl Yara. That's the biggest name on the female jiu jitsu on the Middle East. So it was a really good match for Emily. Um, because now her name is big over there. Right. So they already said that they want her back. So we know that this year, because uh, the, the event, they go around, they're going to have event now in Brazil, they're going to go to Europe, they're going to come to United States. So I know that either Europe, United States, and or back in Abu Dhabi, that's going to be the October card that they're going to have. So I know that she's going to be back. And then for her as a 22-year-old, that wasn't her... So, uh, if you ask 11 year old Emily, she didn't see herself as a professional for yeah. sure, right? Uh, I think, of course, has the influence of seeing like uh, myself as a coach, like competing, and then she enjoyed that part of competition. She was being successful. So, of course, when you, who, who doesn't like to win, right? So, sure. I always say that sometimes people don't love the sport, they love winning, right? Okay. okay. But she loved winning and she loved the sport. So I think like her her parents are like both school teachers. Um, they I, I don't think they envision her to be a professional athlete. They have like all their plans for her. But she chose to be in Midland. She chose to get her her degree here. She she has her degrees. She's doing masters now and then like but she, she's a full time athlete. Um, so I but that's that's the one percent. Right. That's but the elite. That, yeah, that is that, the elite. That, that's yeah. the, no, I, I don't say the elite because I think I think the way I see is um I gonna give you uh I don't like the word elite because it's like separate people. Right? Okay. Okay. So you can you can say elite in the sense that she's being like a world class athlete. Yeah, then of course she's not normal. A normal person is not an elite, like world class athlete. Sure. Right? But like, but it's on, not just the physical; it's the mental too. It's yes, both. Yeah. yeah. But like, I'm trying to say that like on a on a regular class, she's gonna be on an intermediate class, uh, with you, for example. Like, if you were intermediate class, and like maybe you have no intention of competing whatsoever, but you guys are on the same class, mm-hmm. like doing the same drills, the same techniques, enjoying the time together, and then that thing that that's one thing that's really nice of jiu jitsu, where you can actually be working out. Uh, training uh, new techniques, learning new moves, uh, learning how to figure out the puzzle, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you don't you don't go like on football, for example. Hey, Mahomes, how you doing? Like, can <laughs> we? You don't go like, Hey, LeBron, how you doing? Right, right, right. right, right. But in jiu-jitsu, you can actually train with professional athletes. But in a very controlled environment and both enjoying. Yeah. Right? Of you don't gonna see that like in every school, for example, of course. Uh right. But like in a in a schools that I believe that they preach for the family environment, uh, the safety of everyone, and then who is professional has a separate training. Because I always like to say that training and class are two different things. Okay. Right? So the professional athletes and or people that are aspiring to be professional athletes, they gonna they have their like separate time so for we do their training for that. Right? So but in the regular classes you're gonna see the 66, 66 years old Joe, you're gonna see the twenty two Emily, you're gonna see uh, like my son John Lucas, ten years old, already doing some of the adults classes because he's been training for like seven years now. So he's 10, but he's been training for seven years. Yeah, yeah. So then he has to do some of the adults class to keep learning, like, new things, right? Right. And then but, and then you're going to see uh, Miss Georgia Hans. Um, when I talk about Clay Hans, that would go training for me back when I was in Dallas. So he, because he has his academy in Mineral Wells. Uh, that's the city that he lives. But his mom 
who is six five, I believe. Wow. Okay. A white belt and then on the same class. And that's only in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't want to see that like in baseball, football, soccer, like whatever whatever right. it is. So I think that's what I'm trying to, to the message that I'm trying to, to send is that people, what they can expect, you know, you can really have fun, uh, learn, know how to protect yourself, uh, increase your, uh, your physical capabilities, like, because it's a workout as well. Uh, yeah, I did notice, like, on, on your on your gym, on the building, it is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and fitness. Yeah, Was I mean, that purposeful? Yes, because okay. I want I want people to to relate to healthy lifestyle as well, right? Because if you're going to have a class at 5.30 a.m. on a Friday, but on a Thursday, maybe you went to a fast food place a Thursday night, then I don't think your class at 5.30 a.m. on the morning right. is going to be the same. I mean, I wanted, yeah, that is that is part of the thing I wanted to ask you, right? It's like, obviously, people can come in and train and come to class. They could come six days a week if they wanted mm-hmm. to, right? But what do you train or what do you tell people to be doing outside of the classroom? Because it's not just the time that you put in. It's also, it has to do with factoring what, what you're doing outside of the room, mm-hmm. right? Like, just like you're saying, right? You could train all the time in the world, but if you don't eat right and you don't get good mm-hmm. sleep and you're, you know, you, you don't eliminate stress, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're not really going to be that successful across the board, right? So, yeah. And then, like, I, I also the students, like, hey, guys, what's, what's your goal? I'm always open to communicate because the more, the more I know what your goals are, the more I can help you. Okay. It's almost like you have to help me to help you. Right. Right? And then, so I always put myself available for the students. And then we have a coaching staff that are always available for the students. So whatever question may be on um, working out or nutrition, then that's why, like, we have one of my one of my uh, black belts, Jared Jones, that said that he would go to Dallas, like, back on the 2009, 2010. Yeah. So he trains with me. Right, his son, his wife, they train as well, right? Um, but he's my strength and conditioning coach. And then he, now I have a lot of students that they do outside of jiu-jitsu, they do a strength and conditioning with him. Okay. Not not just to help them in jiu-jitsu, but like for health benefits. Right, right. Because I, th- I like the idea of working out jiu-jitsu and nutrition because one one thing attached to the order, yeah, right. So like the more the more I know you, the more I can uh, give you like uh, input on like oh I think you could do this or because like I don't say you have to because man what if uh, you like every day like eight to five and then like but like you have to drop your kid at seven thirty mm-hmm. then like you rush to pick your kid. So sometimes people just really don't have time. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that there are days that you wish the day was 27 hours, <laughs> right? And then, but it's not. It's only 24. Right. It's the same 24 to everybody, but not everybody on the same 24. Right, right. Right. So for the, for, so take out, you know, children, take out even teenagers, right? Like 20s and 30s, like the, 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 the men and women that come in that are in their 30s, 40s and up, Right. Are they are, what's the split between like, are they the parents of children that are students or are they if they are coming in when they are coming in? Is it more for that? Like just overall health benefits mm-hmm. versus like I want to be a competitor. You know, what I mean, is a is jujitsu a young person's sport? No, I don't think it's a young person's sport because I just I just gave you the example of like 60 years old, like students. Yeah. I mean, when you talked about Joe, I mean, and I saw him on your Instagram, I'm going I'm going like. My assumption was either he's been doing this for 40 years or more. No, no. Right? Or <laughs> or he was just like an already existing athlete. Because I'm trying to get into the mindset of the, the person that's 50 years old, okay, and they walk in day one, you know, by and large, mm-hmm. what is their motivation for wanting to start at this point in their life, right? Is it mm-hmm. is it health benefits? Is I it... think, for example, like when I when I, I said about Miss Georgette, so yeah. she's like Joe's age, right? But... Um, of course, she had the influence of having 
uh, their sons doing jiu-jitsu. So okay. that's like, okay, they do that. So I'm going to do that to work out. But she start for her, like, healthy, like, to have a to do a workout. Yeah. It uh, seems a lot of mental health, too, right? Yeah, that seems like yeah, it has to be a lot of it. She, she uh, always like to run. Okay. All right? But she want to do something different. And then I think because they're not kids anymore, but their kids, they're always, like, always going to be your kids, right? Right. So because their ki her her kids were, like, doing jiu-jitsu, she has a son that has a black belt that has his own academy. She has a son that has a purple belt and then trains, uh, lives in Lubbock, he, he was training here with me as well. So like, oh, I, I want to start jiu-jitsu because I want a different workout. And then she goes there and she enjoys, she has fun. She trains in the women's class. She trains, like, in order classes, like, uh, no gi, gi, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, she uh, She's consistently there, like, uh, pretty, almost every day of the week. All uh -huh. right? Okay. Um, and her her reason was just, like, have, like, a different workout. And then she enjoys, she enjoys learning. You know, she's there. Like, sometimes she does, like, two classes on the same day. Right? And um, so I just want to make sure that people, I think, because... I have accomplished a lot of stuff on, on the competition side. Yeah. People are always going to attach to me that, oh, everybody that trains with Bruno competes. And Must it, be it a competitor, not, right? Yes, and it's not like Georgette doesn't compete. So, like, we have Georgette, and then we have Joe, and then, like, Joe started on his 50s, oh, but he was already working out, and then, like, he like he likes that, and then, oh, he saw that was a competition, he's a competitive person, yeah. and he wants to compete. Miss Georgette, she's there, and then she trains, and then she enjoys, have fun, and then she goes home, and then she she works, and then, like, boom, she has her, her day done, you know? So um, I just want to make sure that people understand that it's not, like, oh, you have to compete. I did say that I encourage my students to try competition at one time. Yeah, at least try. Yeah, yeah be, but because of the self-defense aspect. Right, okay, right. Because it is totally different than... Yes. You know, you don't know what's coming at you. Exactly. You didn't talk about these. So, you didn't talk about it beforehand. Yes. Can yeah. you protect yourself? Because in a competition setting, for example, uh, you can win a match against me, but not necessarily defeat me. Okay. Right? Yeah. Oh, I lost because there's points, there's scoring system. So inside the scoring system, I lost. But, like, did, you protect, did I protect myself? You were able to, like to fully control me, to, like, submit me. Like, no. So I protect myself. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I always, like, acknowledge the fact that, like, if you put yourself one time in that situation, you know, you you can even, like, understand how you're going to feel in a stress situation. Because mm -hmm. someone attacking you, like, how are you going to react? Maybe I have trained you for five years, but you never been in a stress situation. Now someone attacks you or attacks your wife or your kid or whatever, right? Like some people maybe they're gonna froze up. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't know how, they don't know how, they don't know how to react to that stress. Right. They've never been exposed to it. Yes, yeah. and and that's and that can, and that can happen and has happened like multiple times with students when they go for the first competition. Right. But now they know, so now they can work on that. And then sometimes they don't try again. Sometimes they try again because, oh, no, I want to see how I'm going to do now because now I know what to expect. And then normally the performance is much better. I didn't talk about the outcome because the outcome you have no control of. One thing that I tell, especially the kids, is if you're in a tournament and it has four kids in your bracket or 20 kids, really the normal result is to lose because just one person is going to have a gold medal. Mm -hmm. So why you stress so much about the gold medal? Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to competition, people gonna think they always think about the gold, which I understand. Like I love the gold, <laughs> but I, every tournament that I go, I I know that I know that like it's high probability for like losing. Sure. But me myself, with like myself, I just like enjoy. I enjoy competition. Not everyone enjoy competition, right? I'm mean, just saying like what I share with the students. So they don't focus too much on the outcome. It's more like we enjoy the process. Like, oh, now I'm eating better. I'm working out. I'm going to bed earlier. And then like, oh, is that kid like oh, I'm not staying too. Late. I'm not staying up late on the video game on the weekends anymore. Now like, so all those things. So I think when the students try, I see, and they see the improvements not only in jujitsu 
both their life overall. So I, and I think that that's a, is a nice. That's why I think that's nice as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's the um for the people who are not, you know, I won't I won't say hobbyists, but I mean, there's got to be a large majority. I'm adults versus mm -hmm. the children that are like, you start as a white belt. Like, there's got to be a large percentage of that don't even make it to blue belt, mm -hmm. right? Like. For a multitude of reasons, like are there are there just some general reasons why you know they just sort of like is it is it they're just not catching on? Is it factors outside of even training? Is it like it's just it's just the mental thing a lot of the times that they don't even get to the next the next belt. So, I believe we are on a generation that we were not things yesterday. Very fast, very yes. fast. Okay. Like, it's not even, like, now. It's, like, yesterday, right? right. And uh, when I say generation, like, that meaning, like, the adults as well. It's not just the kids. Right. Right? So, in jiu-jitsu, because it can take long for you to learn, right? It can take long for you to start chaining techniques, like, putting together things. Oh, that's why this, this is why that. And then I think that's the part where... People fall in love with jiu-jitsu. Okay. But people also quit jiu-jitsu. It's it's um they had a they had a misconception that it's like two years or you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Or like, I want I want to be I want to belt in two yeah. weeks. Right. And it's like not every student. Yeah. Uh but it's uh, gonna be a common question. Oh, Professor, how long do you think it get me to get to a black belt? 10, 15, who knows how mm -hmm. many years, like a lot of, of a lot of work, right? But yeah. like the, uh, my my answer is like I was, I say that I like to give the answer that nobody likes. Depends. Okay. <laughs> right. But it's not tomorrow. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Because it depends, like maybe, maybe like you start Jiu Jitsu this coming Monday. And then man, for the first two or three years, you're very consistent. Like, you can come like Monday to Saturday. Uh, you're, you're not comparing just like a Regular student going there every class, boom, boom. So two, three years, you're gonna be like in a blue belt, right? Um, depending on your consistency, can you even start getting close to like getting a level of a purple belt. But and then like you change jobs and now you have time to go only three times a week. Mm -hmm. So three times a week is not six times a week. So now you train half of your use to train, right? So like they're gonna change the time that. Right, you're gonna get you to get to a level that you'll go to the purple belt and then brown belt and then like to black belt. Right. So that's like sometimes life does happen. Sure. So I also have issues about the understanding of consistency in Jiu Jitsu. Consistency for me can be six times a week. For you can be three times a week. And then something happens and then like, man. Professor, next week I can come five times. Like, great. Then you have a work trip. Then you miss a week, right? But every time that, but inside your routine, more or less, you know that you can be there three times a week. That's what means consistency. And then life can can change. And now you can be only two times a week. But you, you know, you're two times, you're always there. Mm -hmm. Right? So I always try to tell that to people because if you get um, a student like... Um, like, I have a girl, her name is Maya. She's 13 years old, right? She's in adults class. She's traveled all over the world as well. Um, she, As of right now, she wants to be a professional athlete. Okay. Right? Yep. And as of right now, I really mean that because as of right now, because she can turn 14, 15, um, now want to be like a doctor. And sure. Because she's 13, right? Right. But, like... That girl, she is there. So she go to school, get off the school, straight to the gym. Then she does between two to four classes, back to back, goes home, and then she has a garage gym, and then her dad goes there. there. Uh, Jet has a workout for her, and then she works out two to four times a week. She likes, like, she enjoys that, mm -hmm. right? Um, that 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 girl, like for example, like if she keep training the way she train, um, uh, maybe by the time she's nine, eighteen, nineteen, she's a black belt. Yeah. 
right? Right. But but that's a le- that's a very high level of consistency. Yeah. But but like that that con- that her consistency gonna be different than Misha Greg. One of the shoes that I have is a purple belt. His wife trained, his son trained, his daughter trained, the whole family trains. And then Misha Greg is there every week, three to four times a week. And I, I'm, I was like, when and then when he means a day, oh, professor, I have to go work, and then, but I'm going to try. Like, I know that he's there three to four times a week. But he's very consistent. He started training with me, I want to say, like, maybe 2015, 16. Uh, work moved him to Houston, then moved him back to Midland. And then, like, he tried to, so he, he's a purple belt. Right? So he's been training maybe on and off because of work, let's say, like, seven years. Like, so if he hadn't stopped and it would be, like, every day, yeah, he could be a brown belt already or maybe even close to black belt. But he's not on jiu-jitsu because of the black belt. Right. He likes the workout. He likes the problem solving, like, the puzzle, like, <clears throat> that that brings. And now... Even better because his wife, his daughter, his son, they train. So now it's a family thing. Right. Oh, like. It's oh. community again. Exactly. Yeah. Now, like, so you're going to see all four editing, right? To, to me, it sounds like, like, again, to the novice, right? Like, I, I kind of look at it like, okay, you start as a white belt, and the next belt, you earn, the first belt you actually earn, right, is the blue, right? And so to me, that's sort of an indicator of the people who are. It makes sense that that, that a small percentage of people. Mm-hmm. Are are you know only going to even get to the blue, because it sort of weeds out, right? Like if you're a purple belt, my my assumption is you, don't you stop love anymore. you yes. love this. Sport, yes, you right? probably don't stop. Yes, exactly. You're going to keep going, right? Like once you probably hit blue, or I guess unless some like life things happen, mm-hmm. right? It seems like you've kind of gone like I really love this mm-hmm. because it took this much time to even get to the essentially the first rung of this ladder, mm-hmm. right? Um, because, again, to the novice, I can go around, like, I can say, oh, hi. If somebody told me they were a purple belt, I literally don't know what that means. Exactly. You know what I mean? To the outside world, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a huge accomplishment, yes. right? And it obviously is very, um, the, the status level in that community. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't know that. Now, I know black belt just because of Hollywood. Yes. You know what I mean? I know. So, like, black oh, belt he's meant a you black were, belt. She's you, a black belt. You were the... You were the the, the the instructor, the sensei, the master. Exactly right, that, <laughs> and that was only it, right? And so you know, all the belts in between. But it makes a lot of sense that one, it's not easy to reach to the next level, and it does mm-hmm. take time. And I do agree with you that I think the today's generation is like, if I'm if I come to you, and I'm 45 years old, I'm older than you, Bruno, right? If I come to you, oh, one year would be 44 okay, now. See, in March. I mean, <laughs> so. If I come to you and and I I do appreciate that you're like what are your goals right because if mm. I'm twelve I'm gonna have different goals than I'm forty five one hundred percent right and if you ask me what are my goals and I go how long does it take to become a black belt I kind of feel like you would come to me and go like Ryan let's be real listen okay dude <laughs> <laughs> it's that's that's the wrong sort of motivation to come in right mm. I, another side of motivation that seems more realistic is either my child is your student, right? And mm-hmm. it's a family thing, and I li- I love that mm-hmm. aspect of it. Or it's personally just like, I used to be an athlete, or, you know, I want to relive that. I like the strategy of it. I want to just get into shape, mm-hmm. right? I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily want to compete, mm-hmm. right? I'm not, I don't have some aspirations that I'm going to be, you know, have a crowd around me cheering for me and something mm-hmm. like that, right? But I do see the, the, the benefits of it because I, I agree, like, I think you're only going to get so much uh, I think there's you're just going to the gym and just kind of doing your own thing, getting mm-hmm. on the bike, getting on the treadmill, lifting some weights. I think you're just going to get a different side of that, right? Yes. And then you get this, and then you get the mental side of it of it's me versus mm-hmm. me, but also me versus you, right? Um, I, I do see that side of it, and that's what I was more or less curious about. Was going like for the for the I don't want to say old, but for the older person, mm-hmm. right? Is it is it purely just like it just seems like it's um, there's there's an attraction there, right? I'm just trying to mm-hmm. figure out by and large what is it to pe- that draws uh, I, people in. I think most uh, for the most part, what I see uh, outside of the self defense aspect, uh, I see the fitness part of jiu jitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when it comes with depending on what uh what's your background right if when you come for veterans law enforcement for example and they're gonna come on a, a lot for the mental aspect mm -hmm. like especially on veterans um so we do we do have a lot of veterans and then ptsd and then all that and then like that's part um becomes like what i call the math therapy right um and then for law enforcement it's like to be able to do like have more knowledge to be able to do their job police officers for example like you're now altercation like how do you control like you see like now because we're in a generation as well that everything people grab their phone to film instead of actually help right yeah yeah so like but how they can control someone with not and not being like accused of like doing something and then we're gonna go back for the beginning of like how powerful is you can control someone and choose to not hurt that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Literally just control that person. And I think for, especially for police officers, that's like huge. That's like really important. Sure. Yeah. Right. That's so, a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's life or death for them. In, exactly. in a lot of instances, so, yeah. I, so for me, um, outside of the self-defense aspect, going to have the fitness as well. But like, if you go for like police officers, of, uh, they're going to have that like control over like situation that they're gonna be facing or if you go to to veterans it's gonna be like that kind of like therapy like you're having like a group of people again like so I'm sharing what they share like with me right and then like we have uh twice a month for like a class uh that one of my black belts Dustin Hammer he runs that class um uh, he was on September 11 like saving people like all that uh, he cheats on the Mighty Oaks, that a program for veterans and uh, law enforcement as well. Um, so twice a month we have that class that's like open for the public. It's not just the students, mm -hmm. like anyone can come in and then they get exposed to Jiu Jitsu and then they feel the, the feeling of a community and they have a support there. And, and then some guys they join Jiu Jitsu after, some guys they don't join, they just go to the open mess and they're like, but I know that twice a month they, those guys are gonna be there. So that's good for them. Yeah. All right. Um, so I feel like that's like, so you're going to have the people that do for the self-defense, going to have the people that do for the fitness aspect, going to have the people that are going to do for the mental health aspect. Right. 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 Um, and then like in every case, I'm trying to, uh, with the whole coach stuff, just provide everything that they need to reach their needs and goals inside the jiu-jitsu. How do you teach people to hopefully not get injured, or what can people do to help prevent them, prevent injuries when mm -hmm. they come to train, you know what I mean, outside of the gym? Um, one thing that I tell my my students is the biggest, one of the biggest qualities that you can have uh, as a training partner is full trust. So I'm training with you, Ryan, you're training with me, Bruno, then maybe... Um, Ryan's a white belt that I've been training for five months and there's an intermediate class now. And then maybe like you're going like, hey Ryan, do you want to roll with me? And then you're like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna train for Professor Bruno. Like, oh no, no, like no. I am, I can guarantee you, the safest person for you to train inside my school. Right, because you have the most experience. Right. So right. like so but but by by personality as well. Uh but I think because of the way uh I structured the the classes, yeah, and I structured the the system, the methodology of, of, of teaching. Uh, the number of like injuries are very low. Like when something happens, like really, is like an accident. It's not like oh, someone arm lock somebody or leg lock somebody or choke somebody, and they're like really like really gonna be an accident that could happen. You sprint on a baseball field or on mm -hmm. a football field or like, uh, like you lift like or you're doing some deadlifts and then oh like you didn't focus on the posture and then on the form and then like, so uh, like it's like accidents that can happen like anything right. that you're doing. Right. Are there more injuries at the lower levels than at the like? I, that's what I would think no. because of the lack of experience per se. If if you take on the uh, yeah like someone maybe gonna like oh I tweak my knee a little bit or like. I feel that, like I sprain my 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 ankle, what like because they don't have full understanding yet. Right. So they're gonna do things that 
they don't know that makes sense because for lack of knowledge. Right, right, right. But like they just trying to get a takedown or they trying to go a reversal from bottom to top, right? Um, but again, that's when it comes back for the control environment because when we start, I don't push through the rounds. Then you start to do some situations like, oh, you learned that technique, so the round is that technique. You try to accomplish, I'm trying to not let you do it. Now we start in specific situations. And so like I build the issues for that as well. So by the time you're doing full round, that's why I said that like um, when you go to intermediate class, you have idea of this already. So it's harder for get hurt. When by the time you want to advance level, you have already understood because idea and understanding are two different things. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm on advanced level, you have an understanding of Jiu Jitsu. So like, it's really hard. Like, so, and then every time that I'm teaching a technique, I'm going like, all right, guys, here are things that sometimes people do for lack of understanding and then they can hurt people. So I always show them. Right. So I want to make sure that you guys don't do this or I want to make sure that you guys don't do that. Oh, reaction that people can give for a technique that then they don't they don't know that they're exposing themselves to get injured. Like, no, people do that and then the knee happens this. Or they do that and then the ankle happens that. Or you lock the hip in that position and then that happens. Um, I really make sure that when I'm teaching or any of my students are teaching, like, we explain, like, we break down the whole technique. That's great to hear. Yes. Yeah. We break down the whole technique because... I want you to understand the why and why not. Mm. Right. So, and that's why it's like, we can call a gene, like no problem, but that's why I call a school. Right? Because right. I'm really teaching the art of jiu-jitsu, so you going to be able to really have an understanding of what you're doing. Right? And then the more you learn, of course, more knowledge you're going to have, and then like, more and I think the more knowledge you have, more control you're gonna be. One thing that I always say is that the more you fight, less control you have. Mm. The more control you have, less fight. I don't wanna fight anybody. Me I neither. Wanna, I wanna I wanna mm. control people. Right. Okay. If yep. I have to. Right. Right. Um and that's what I praise for my for my kids. So I said like my because my wife and I we have our kids there, like training Every day is like we don't make um, on the way that they have to do every day, but I think because it's part of the routine, they go and then they train every day, and then um, and I'm just sharing that part as well because sometimes people like uh, so but so you do that for your kids as well. Yeah, my kids they for me they have to do jujitsu because they cannot chew black belts as a parents and not know how to protect themselves. So sure. that's part of how we raise them, but. I think because of the family environment, their friends, hanging out with friends and everything, like they want to train every day. The last three years, when we, my wife and I asked them, like, what do you want to do for your birthday? I want to celebrate at the gym. We're like, really? Like, yeah, okay. We bring cake, everything, cupcakes, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Celebrate, so they run on the mass, play. We sing her birthday. And that's how, and then like, because they do that, I get to experience things with them. Like, I was in the very first Brazilian national championship in 1994. That was the f very first Brazilian nationals in the history, right? By the, the, the International Federation. And in the last two years, I have took my son. Last year, I took my daughter as well. So for me, it's like a full, like, cycle. First circle, yeah. Yes, yeah, like, my son was four years old, four to five. And then, so my daughter was two to three. I think the last time we competed on the last tournament. So my daughter wasn't doing jiu-jitsu yet. My son was on his beginning, so we did a tournament together. Uh, but it's something like, because I share like some things that the, the parents do, the families do, and like uh, I think that I'm going to do this year is going to be on the same tournament as them. But I, I, so if you ask me like, so you guys, so you guys all want to go there and win? Like, no, I just, for me, like how nice is that I can make a living of something that I really love? Something that I really can impact people's lives. Yeah. And something that my children enjoy to do with me. Like before I came to the podcast with you today, I was on the competition train in my school. I was training because I'm going to be on the same tournament as them. And they're mad side teaching, uh, mad side like sitting and watching me train. 
Yeah, it's it's really it's really great. I'm a father, and it's really great to hear that. Like, you know, obviously you're passionate about this, but you didn't have to force your passion no. onto your children. Your children enjoy it as well, and it. I think yeah, it just makes it a much more enjoyable experience as a family, mm -hmm. right? When 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 everybody sort of loves it for 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 those reasons because it's mm -hmm. truly out of the love of it and and um i pre i really appreciate your time today like for the people who who come to midland or even pass through midland or live in midland what's the best way to get a hold if they want to come check out your um your 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 school oh to, through social media like on instagram bashes uh Jiu -Jitsu official right um we always reply over there all right um if you Google was always gonna be like gonna bring all social medias like the the Instagram, Facebook, and then our website, and then like we get the message through the, through the website, and then we always reply as well. Um, I think that's the the easiest way like for someone that cannot stop by right away. You can always stop by on Medkiff, and then uh, very close to the, to the HB, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's nice when. People have an opportunity to stop by because they can really see the school operating like kids class, kids class to women's class, and then adults class going because we have two mats with so multiple classes at the same mm -hmm. time, right? And then the people can not only see the class going on, but the environment because they're gonna have the waiting area, and then you're gonna see kids hanging out, parents hanging out while class is going on at the same time, and then people getting a tour because when you go for the first time, so we schedule a tour so we can show you the the, the our okay. school, we can explain our program, uh, they, they we can explain who who I am, who the instructors are, uh, what we do, how we how we like to approach Jiu Jitsu, we explain uh, our program or methodology, how we go phases, and so because we really wanna. Uh, you walking in, and I feel like uh, that's the way that I have to travel. We want you walking in, and you don't feel that you walk into a fight club. Yeah, I can tell you that. I went, to, I went to your school to come and and look for you, mm -hmm. right, to invite you on the podcast. And um, yeah, it didn't feel like a fight club at all. It was like it was very, it was very bright mm -hmm. and um, very welcoming. Um, I didn't feel intimidated because I was sitting there going like, I'm mm. not coming here to train, right? Mm. And they don't know why I'm here. And and uh, they were like, oh, Bruno's in Abu Dhabi right yes. now. Um, but you can DM him on Instagram. And I DM'd you and you you replied pretty in instantaneously, which I was mm. like, wow, that's that was great to see. So very active on social media. But um, yeah, like I said, we'll definitely put all your links in mm. the description. You can find it in the description. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to promote or anything like that, let the people know out there that's coming up. Um so I for sure have to thank uh, Fuji Sports and Fuji Mass, like my, my sponsors. I've been with Fuji since 2013, oh, wow. uh, working with them since 2014, officially as a, as a sponsored athlete. And then so we go completing 10 years now, 2024. I think that says uh, the level of relationship that we have. Uh, I think it's always nice when you have a long relationship because that I think long relationship says a lot about the person. Sure. Right. Um, of course, thank um, all the, the coaching staff, like which includes my wife, Petia. Um, like I said, she's judo and she's black belt. She teaches the judo class. We have judo classes as well. Oh, okay. On the school. That's part of our program. Right. Um, then professors Felipe, uh, professor Emily, and then the assistant coaches like Casa Moura, Pesh De Leon, Vanessa Padilla, because that's the whole uh, coaching staff. They do all amazing job with the kids and adults. Um, all our students uh, for the trust uh, to let us guide them on the martial arts journey, right? The parents, especially because as a parent myself, uh, have the, the trust on someone to help you guide your kids because we parents, but we need other people to guide our kids as well. Yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, and then the trust that the parents have on us to guide their kids, for me, that's priceless. Uh, me as a parent my, uh, myself as well. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Hope um, not be the last one. Hope to come other times. You can talk about other things inside of Jiu Jitsu, outside of Jiu Jitsu. Maybe have some of my competitors and or just hobbies. Uh, come over here so you can see yeah. all the insights of what we do at our school as well. 
Yeah, you're welcome back anytime, man. I, I really appreciate your time today, and I thank you for coming in. I know you're a busy guy. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. But, you know, hey, if you're in Midland or you're coming to Midland, you want to get it in with um, Bastos, School, Bastos Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Fitness and uh, come, come talk to Bruno, and um, we'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.